Well, hello and welcome back to the Rest Designer Workshop. And I know it's been a little while since my last video, but I'm sure you'll be glad to hear we're back at the Land Rover. My 1976 Land Rover Series 3 88 inch diesel features quite heavily in this channel. And since I sold the MG, I've been able to direct some more funds and time on to work here at the Land Rover. As you probably guessed from the title of this and the thumbnail, we're going to be starting some work really on the front end of this. Over time, it needs new suspension and two new swivels rebuilt. Um, I also plan to add some freewheeling hubs and generally give the front suspension um, a tidy up. In terms of finances, I'm going to have to split that up into a few jobs. So I've got some springs on order and they're going to go on. But in order to do that, I need to get the front axle off, remove it from the vehicle, get it all cleaned up, painted, get the springs off and get ready to put the new one back on and then the next stage of the front rebuild which I'll make separate videos about will be rebuilding those swivels. My main concern is the suspension as there seems to be excessive wear in the bushes and the front springs are looking a bit tired too. So I've got some money, I'm trying to invest it in suspension. I did the rear a couple of weeks ago and you can see the videos over on the channel. I serialised the whole rebuild. So time to do the front and let's get stuck into it. So back here at the Land Rover, um, the wheels are off and we're up on the axle stands and I've propped it up there underneath the body. My main concern is there's quite excessive wear in the rear bushes here at the end of the spring. And the Land Rover's not really sitting straight. I originally thought that was due to the rear springs, but now that I've replaced the rear springs, it's still leaning. And with the axle stands in to stabilise the front, it actually sits flat. So I, su I would suggest that the problem is most likely at the front. Um, springs are a little rusty, they probably are serviceable but no one local to me can re them or check them or take them apart. So I've just ordered some new ones there from Paddocks and they're GME springs which will be the match of the rear ones that I put in a couple of weeks ago. So the next job is to disconnect the steering, probably just going to take the front tie rod, disconnect it at the bad end, um, disconnect the spring in the four corners disconnect the brakes and the prop shaft and then the shock absorbers and then we'll be good to lower the axle down and pull it out to the side and I've kept the packaging from a, another recent purchase which I'll tell you more about soon and I'll be able to use that to keep my floor clean this time and get it all wire brushed down, degreased and new coat of paint and then I'll get the new springs on and replace the axle. That's pretty much the, the game play plan here. So let's get on with that. And here we have one side largely complete. Track rod disconnected, actually without the use of the pillar, which was interesting. Wasn't expecting that, but there's no real rust um, around the taper, which was a pleasant surprise. And it's not overly worn, so that's not going to need replaced. Um, the spring plate is off the bottom, and those two U-bolts have been detached and they came off with quite a fight as the threads were quite rusted. I've disconnected the bottom plate in hole on block with the um, shock absorber which connects in there. It's lovely and rust free and the chassis as you can see is lovely and sound. I've got this bolt out the back. I don't need to do the top one. I don't think those are polyurethane bushes in there. I will check for any play but interestingly just after I'd filmed that last segment which you've just seen um, I phoned Paddocks and I cancelled the order for these springs. Um, <laughs> they're actually in pretty good condition. Only surface rust really and it seems a bit overkill to fork out probably the guts of 160 pounds on two new springs just really when it's the bushes that are letting them down so what I'm going to do is take the springs off, wire brush them thoroughly, um, paint them up and then let plenty of oil soak in between those leaves and I'm also going to replace the bushes either end both sides so more work yes but saving myself some money that then I can invest into rebuilding the swivels. Um, you can maybe, if I can steer this right see the swivels are quite badly pitted um, and that's the same on both sides. I think that's road rash really from gravel and stones in the road jumping up hitting the chrome and pitting it and as you can see the oil seal is not really doing its job hence everything's caked in goo so it's going to take a bit more of a job but 
at least that'll be the front axle finished, front suspension rebuilt, lovely new bushes, new swivels. Um, I'll check the brakes over, they should be fine, they're working perfectly and do that. So apologies, I've left the radio on in the background, I've just realised. So that's one side, let's get the other side done, drop the axle, take it off. I made the mistake of taking the axles and the springs off the rear in one bit last time, which is a bit of a faff, so we're just doing it in single bits this time. So as is typical in the style of this channel, I've gone a completely different direction again. So as I said, cancelled the order for the springs and I have sourced a new chrome swivel ball set for both sides for significantly cheaper than I can get it elsewhere. And once I have that order confirmed, I'll let you know where I've got it from so you can all avail of that saving too. It struck me it's probably better to strip the axle swivel sides down when it's still attached to the axle and on the vehicle because the front axle is really heavy and it's a very unwieldy thing to move. So what I'm going to do is remove the sort of the swivel hub assembly off both sides and then all I'll be left to do is the diff on the axle casing. Um, so I've disconnected the two track rods, steering rod and track rod, sorry. Um, brakes disconnected. And look at the state of the gunk that's coming out of here. Absolutely rotten. Um, and you can see the pitting is really bad in those chrome balls there. So next thing, I've also taken the hub off this end. Um, it's funny actually coming back to it after so many years you look at little things you probably bodged at the time just to get it back in the road. So time to put things right and do it properly this time. So sorry lighting's not wonderful here but I'm going to take these four screws off here and that should allow me to take pull that out and then I'll be able to take the swivel housing and hub assembly off in one um, over the top of the drive shaft. That's my thinking, might be wrong, but I'll do that and then take the chrome ball off the axle and then we'll be good to go. And then obviously I'll repeat it again on the other side, then take the axle off, then take the springs off. And that'll be enough for one video, I think. Oh hey, bit of a blow for freedom here. Um, I've managed to do undo all those nuts there without resorting to an angle grinder, which is a bit of an achievement. And I've turned this over. So yes, it is upside down. The steering arm should not be at the back. Um, pulled it out. Actually looking quite clean in there, although there might be a bit of water contamination in that oil, but not looking too bad. Um, but that chrome ball definitely needs replaced. Look at the pitting and nastiness of that. Um, so just need to lock these, knock these little lock tabs off, pull the steering arm out, and that should be able to separate the swivel housing and the braking back plate off the chrome ball and also get the shaft out as well. So quite pleased with that. Just need to do the same on the other side. I have drained the oil, hence the stain on the floor, out of the differential. So the other side just to do, and then the prop shaft, and then the whole kit and caboodle should be ready to come off in one big bit, ready for paint. Went down to the motor refractors and bought quite a lot of brake cleaner, um, just to try and take some of the gunk off before I remove it and put it on my nice big cardboard sheet. Um, try and reduce the amount of mass created. So let's go from there. So a little bit of degreasing on this side. I've already detached the prop shaft. You can just see it hanging there. Slightly scary to find that the brake back plate is actually loose to the swivel. So that's a bit concerning. Definitely worthwhile. Uh, the annual inspection probably would have picked that up, but it's been delayed because of COVID. So it's just as well I'm rebuilding this. So I've loosened off these nuts at the top. I'm going to take the ones off at the bottom, take the split pin and the castellated nut off the drive shaft and I should be able to take the brake back plate and the swivel housing off and then the drive shaft off and then the chrome swivel. Slightly different arrangement to this side, but then all I have to do is take it off the springs and we'll go from there. Thinking a bit of sandblasting in this, what do you think? And we have success on the driver's side. Sorry, I'm keeping my voice down. My wee son is sleeping in the bedroom above the Land Rover and I really don't want to wake him up. So I've taken the um, swivel hub and swivel housing assembly off in one bit. I thought I was going to be able to separate it on the axle, but that didn't work out. And the two U-bolts can actually come off without too much of a fight. So now I just need to take the shock absorber bolt off, take this off in one go. And that's the case of the leaf springs. And then we're good to go. If you look in here, you can just see just how much play there is in between the shackle bolt and the bush. So it's really worthwhile changing these. And I'm sure you're fed up with me changing my mind in these videos, but now I'm starting to wonder, should I just actually change the springs while I'm down here? 
rather than having to come back in a year or two again. Makes more videos, but makes a lot of extra work. But I'll think anyway, I'll take them off, give them a good inspection, and clean down, de rust them, and see what I'm left with at the end. What do you think? So now that the child's woke up, I can finally talk to you guys. So, front of the springs has been released. This is the steering rod. Um, I've just popped the axle off the middle pin. The rust was holding it quite handily. Just need to do the other side. I have loosened the bolt on that side. I just need to get this nut off here. Um, but just as a show of how much play was in these bushes. Look at this here. That's mad. Never seen the like of it. And that's the clunking noise I was hearing every time I went around the corner. So definitely due a change. These are the poly bush ones. I will check them, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be okay. But these um, original style, but definitely not original quality style um, rubber type bushes in the eyes of the springs are obviously terrible. There's that one there. So the light is going to... Look. You can just pull it out. It's gone. It's completely gone. There is no rubber there. Oh, there we go. Yep, no rubber. Look, the rubber's completely worn away at the bottom of that. Not mad. I knew they were bad, but I didn't know how bad they were. So it's definitely going to be a nicer vehicle to drive once these are changed. Just have the unenviable task of getting these outer sleeves out. And I would say this one here is going to be just as bad. So four of those to do. Get the springs all cleaned up. Might get them sandblasted just to see what they're like. But maybe run over them with a wire brush on the angle grinder just to see what they're like and go from there. But I'm actually shocked at just how bad that is. Um, it was more worn on the outside than the inside, so I don't know whether that's to say something about the alignment of the springs or something, but worth getting changed. I have polyurethane ones to put in here, so it might be worthwhile just doing the top one just so they're all matching and unworn to start with. What do you think? You can tell from this fast empty space that the spring is off on the other side. And finally got this one unbolted after quite a fight. And guess what? Completely loose in there. Clunkety clunkety clunk every time I went around a corner. And I can probably poke that rubber out too. Unbelievable. Nope, that one wants to stay. These here seem pretty tight, so can't even move it by hand. Maybe the, the persuader or Land Rover Tool Special Tool number one, just to put that back into its natural position. Um, but there's definitely no excessive play in those bushes, so I'm not going to rush to change that bush in there. Um, it really seems to be doing its job. Good old poly bushes, and I think it's proof of putting the polyurethane is a much better replacement than modern day rubbers. See, the bottom of that's nearly rubbed smooth where it's been in contact with the, the metal of the outer sleeve. So, time to enter into the fun of replacing four bushes, and we'll take it from there. Oh, the joys of Land Rovers. So, started to make my way through this bush here and it is starting to move, I can feel it moving a little bit at the bottom, there's more of a lip um, but the outer sleeve is putting up quite the fight and I have three more of these to do but even if I can get one today and come back to it another day and build up a bit of stamina again, attacking it with uh, a punch and a cold chisel and a bit of a hacksaw action as well, so I've got it cleared maybe 10% of the way but we'll get there Success one bush outer casing removed with potential only minor damage to my thumb and my other digits. And I'm not even sure my wedding ring is circular anymore, but a lot of hammering involved. But that is clear to put a nice new polyurethane bush in. And I've made a mess of my garage floor right through the concrete. Quite a lot of hammering, but I'm not entirely sure that my uh, little bench vice would stand up to that beating. So I think that will do me for today. It's not the end of the video. I'll come back at another day, but probably need to go and buy some more degreaser and get stuck into that axle casing. Um, so it's painted and ready to go back on. Clean up the springs, paint them, put that the two springs on the empty axle casing just with the diff on. Um, probably just with a new pinion oil seal and a input flange just to make sure it's nice and oil tight and probably a new diff gasket as well. I know I'm waving my hands around in the air. Um, put that on before I start into the swivels because they're going to be a horrible job but worth taking time over and doing right. I'll put a new bolt through here or the old bolt back through just keep these in line and then I'll just use the crowbar to straighten that back up. That's just how stiff they are um, but there's certainly no movement on either side of those which is great. 
and need new bolts to the prop shaft. Right, I'm sure you don't need to see me remove the other three of these. Let's get that done. Some more dismantling and see how long this video gets before I have to post it. So I really hope you enjoyed that video here on the Rest of Saga Workshop. This particular series is probably going to run for a little while just as it's going to take some time to get through all the components of the front axle, get them all clean, degreased, painted, and get everything put back together and eventually the crowning glory is going to be a pair of brand new freewheeling hubs. Now I know freewheeling hubs are quite contentious in the series Land Rover world but I'm really looking forward to putting them on as to be honest I don't use four-wheel drive very often and I feel anything that can take a bit of um, resistance out of the drivetrain I think that would be a good thing. I'm really looking forward to getting some ferry freewheeling hubs as I think they'd be most suitable for my 1976 Land Rover so let's keep an eye out for those and there will be plenty more updates coming soon. So hopefully you can join me over on Facebook, you can find me on Instagram, on Twitter as well, and I try to update across all those social media channels. So please hit like below, give me a thumbs up, comment, and most of all subscribe to my channel if you want to see the rest of this series. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you again soon. Cheerio!